let's look at the surprising things that AI looks for when it comes to video. Uh, so when it comes to search engine optimization for video uh, posts, think of a lazy AI that's trying to get a number with the least amount of effort possible. Uh, it's a lot of work to do image recognition, text transcription, uh, searching videos for keywords. So this type of recognition is really expensive because it consumes a lot of computing power and it consumes a lot of energy. And if you're going to do this for every single person on social media, you can imagine like it's very expensive. So what are easier metrics to look at? So let's start with post text. Now it's easy for the lazy AI to measure the length of text. Now at first, we might think that more text means more watch time. But keep in mind that anything beyond, say the first sentence is going to get cut off by ellipses on platforms like Facebook. So keep it short. And by short, I mean, one sentence short. Yeah, it, it's actually kind of surprising to me as well. I was I was surprised like one, one sentence short um, is is kind of it was a surprise to me. <laughs> A buzz sumo analysis of 800 million Facebook posts found that those with 80 characters or less, and that's roughly about one sentence, had a 66% higher engagement rate. Now, the reason could be because anything beyond the first sentence is hidden behind the ellipses that most people don't click on to read more. Uh, but this 80 character guide is not just Facebook. It also applies to Twitter and LinkedIn, according to Hootsuite. And I have references for all this stuff. I'll include it in the blog post. So just go to AIparenting.live forward slash blog post and you'll, you'll see all the references there. Uh, but more, and it's interesting, like the shorter posts got like more, um, they got way more engagement. And the rules are slightly different. If you're doing it on Instagram or Pinterest, it was roughly about double the number of characters. But in general, the first principle is shorter is better for these posts. Think of like the party analogy. So you're in a party, you know, just keep it short. Like, uh, you know, you're meeting a lot of people. You don't have time to go and have like some long winded conversation. That's for a different time. That is not for social media. Um, so very, very interesting because the exact opposite is true when it comes to articles and blogs, where generally longer is better. So for example, Search Wilderness found that posts with more than 1900 words got double the number of views uh, compared to posts with less than that on LinkedIn. So on LinkedIn, if you have just more characters on an article, they tend to get more views. And 1900 seems to be the threshold where you see like the same number of views and then 1900, it just doubles all of a sudden. So something is going on there. Um, now you might be asking like, if I have a post, mm, is it okay to put like a link um, to, to those posts? Um, I mentioned before, like, oh, you're taking people away from the party. Now I've heard mixed reviews and mixed results with this one. Um, so when it comes to adding um, a link to posts, Neil Patel, who is like kind of a guru in the uh, social, uh, SEO space, he argues that including links helps to increase the authority of whatever you're pointing to, like that link, um, on uh, various like search engines, right? So for SEO perspective, it's actually a good thing. Um, and so the more social media links that there are to that post, the more search engines like Google will treat it as an authority because an authority is basically something that has a lot of links to it. And so the more links that you can create, the more it's going to be treated as an authority. That doesn't mean it's going to be high on the social media platform, but it does mean that it may be higher in a search engine ranking. So more links, uh, more authority. <laughs> so uh, keep in mind, and this is something that is often forgotten about posts, is that 
uh, all of this like authority stuff and search engine optimization only applies if your post is listed as public, uh, visible to everyone on the internet, and not only you're uh, limited to your, your friends only. If it is friends only, um, for example, on Facebook, then generally uh, search engines will not will not consider it because it's considered private. Um, so generally that that's not going to appear. So one sentence and like one call to action. So what that means is, what is this all about? What are you or what is the call to action? And then just something brief of like, okay, where do I go? How do I learn more about this? Like, it, make it easy for me if I wanted to to take a call of action. So one sentence. Uh, plus one call to action. And you keep it that short. If you're able to, people are going to like pay more attention. And so, <laughs> awesome. So next, I want to talk a little bit about audio. You know, it might seem kind of weird, like, oh, why, why do you think audio? Now, in audio, I asked the question of what do you think is an easy, like a, a thing that would be easy for the lazy AI to measure. Certainly, the length of audio. So the longer like this, this video is perhaps the more thought that got put into it. Mm, not really, not really, actually. Um, another thing to consider is loudness actually. So how many of you have watched a video with where the audio was so soft, you could you couldn't hear what they were actually talking about? You know what I mean? You probably didn't watch the video for very long before you jumping on to another video. So the first step is to make sure that you're getting the maximum volume from your audio track. In my confident live video series, I mentioned that the purpose of loudness is it helps the other person feel like they are closer to a face to face conversation with you. And, and, and that's all we're trying to do is just trying to reproduce what it would be like to, to meet this person face to face in an actual like real party. For audio tracks, it's a good first step to increase the volume. So it doesn't clip and cause distortion. Uh, you know, sometimes the audio sounds soft, because there's uh, P's and T's like P, T, that th these push the microphone really, really hard, like if you're if you're directly in front of the microphone. And so how can you solve this? Um, you can put your microphone at an angle. And that can help, uh, like reduce the amount of force that is going um, that is being applied. And you can see like my microphone is at an angle. I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's slightly angled to me. Um, and then another is you can fix it afterwards by boosting the soft sounds while limiting the loud sounds to negative 0.1 decibels, uh, so that it sounds louder. Uh, and it still doesn't clip because the worst case scenario is it, it's too loud. And then you hear like distortion in the audio. And ugh, nobody wants to, to hear that. Let me show you what I mean. Um, so in this example, um, we're using my voice live. And you can see that the input coming in is running at roughly about negative 12 decibels. And then we're boosting it, you can see like we're actually boosting it by, you know, um, 10, 12, like 20 decibels, and your program might be different. But you can see that the, the actual output volume is louder. Um, attenuation means that oh, it was about to clip. So it actually uh, prevented that from happening. And what I do is I just load a like a voice broadcast uh, type of, you know, um, thing or you just limit to like negative 0.1 decibels. And that seems to to fix a lot of the issues. And you can do this in, in Premiere, you can do this pretty much in any program as well. Um, now, that fixes the volume of your voice. But what about your breathing and your pauses? Right? Because we we take a, a deep breath or, you know, we pause, you know, in our normal speech. So I did this experiment to see if adding a soundtrack that is like, you know, normally, it's quite quiet. So let's say instead of like, a, like 100% volume is where you start off, whenever somebody's talking, I reduce it to 15% 
of that regular volume. So it's, it's quiet. You can't even hear it. But when there's no one talking, it increases the volume. So it fills in those gaps. Um, and one of the ways that you can do this is a, a method called audio ducking. Uh, so it, it's kind of like, oh, there's audio duck, you know, like reduce the amount of, of audio uh, when somebody else is speaking. And you know what? I tried this. And you know what I found? That it was promoted more often. It, like more people would see it. And so that's why you often hear like a soundtrack uh, in my video previews. Because the soundtrack will compensate for the times when it's quiet. So soundtracks. <laughs> or, you know, it could be like sound music, just ambient musics. Uh, compensate for uh, when the audio is low. <laughs> And I only do this for my posts. I don't do this during the, the live streams like I could, but it, it, it's just really weird. It sounds really weird when you cut it. Uh, and so that's why I don't do it on the, the live streams. Now let's look at video. Now it's certainly hard to analyze an entire video, but if you think about some of, like I mentioned that your average post only gets about 1.8 seconds of, of actually watch time. So really, the only thing that matters is the first few frames of your video, right? So if it's like 30 frames a second, it's just like those first 30 frames. And in fact, of those first 30 frames, probably the first frame is the most important. I, I often say that the first frame of your 60 second video is critically important. And the reason for that is many social media platforms, they do not allow you to change the thumbnail of your video. Instead, what they use is the first frame of the video because it's, it'll lead to the most consistency when it starts playing the video. And so if AI is being lazy, comment, what would you think it would look for in the first frame? What do you think it would look for? You know, and a lazy AI wouldn't look for words or images because, I mean, that's expensive. So what would it look for instead of words and images? Well, how does brightness impact your image? Just take a look at your own feeds. Honestly, just, just go, like, pull up your social media right now, or maybe after you've, you've watched this. But take a look at it. Do you notice that you, you, seen, you seem to see more images that are taken outside? or near really bright lights. In my Confident Live series, I mentioned that brighter images, they mimic what our eyes are able to see in a real face-to-face -face situation. Even when it's like dark, um, our eyes are able to compensate for that. But most cameras, like digital cameras, are not able to. So if you see a dark image, then people generally ignore it. Um, now, if you're recording in a dark, indoor place, this is where the B-roll, um, like that is brighter, something can really help your video stand out. If you can put that as the first frame of your video, it's going to have a, a big impact. And the benefit of it is that not every post that you have is going to be your face on there. You have different things. You have like different images of the different types of B-roll that you've added. So it, it does give some variety and you don't want it to be super boring either. So. Uh, for myself, I'm also doing some experiments with, like, if we're doing a square video, right? So that means you have your video and then you have a title on the top that tells you, okay, this is roughly what it's about. And then you have text captions on the bottom. Uh, I'm actually experimenting with a white background on the, the top and bottom bars instead of a black one on these square videos. Because potentially what it does is it will make the average image brighter, right, than if you just had it on black. And so it's another like small little tweaks, small little experiments. It's all about doing like tiny little experiments and seeing, you know, what what happens when we when we've got more more audience attention. So I like the idea of like I like the idea of a lazy AI as a first principle when it comes to uh, search engine optimization. Because it's so easy to understand. Like, it's so easy. It just applies to everything. It applies to text. It applies to video. It applies to audio. Like, what is easy? 
you know, yes, we could go and, you know, do like read the text and everything. But if you think about like AI, if we were to do that for every single video uh, that was posted, and there's millions of videos posted every single day, it would be too much. So we've got to look at other things. Um, and so we look at things that people don't normally look at, but are easy to get into the numbers. Uh, and so I hope that it's helpful, the, the lazy, the lazy AI approach. 